Welcome to the second part of the overview of uniform circular motion. And here we are going to look at uh, two questions. The first one is the definition of the physical quantity angular velocity. Angular velocity has a symbol which looks like W. It's called omega. Omega. So what is angular velocity? Now let's compare this with uh, linear velocity. Linear velocity is a displacement covered by unit time or speed is distance covered by unit time or the ratio of the distance covered to the time taken to cover that distance. Similarly, angular velocity is the ratio of the angle swept by the radius to the time taken to sweep that radius. Now, what do I mean by this? Over here, I still have this object starting from point A. Let's assume after time t, it is at point B. This radius has swept a given angle, theta, at the center of the circular path. So the rate at which this angle has been swept is what we refer to as angular velocity. It is the rate of change of angular displacement. Now what is the unit of angular velocity? Can we be able to derive that? Of course we can. Theta is measured in uh, radians, while time is in seconds. So the unit for angular velocity is radians per second. Now let's go back to the definition of angle. You remember over here, the arc length AB is S, and we defined theta as S over R. This implies that uh, S is equal to R theta, you know, after multiplying both sides by R. Suppose we were to divide both sides by T. What are we going to get? If we do that, we are going to get distance divided by time, which is the linear speed of this particle along the circumference of the circle because we are talking about this distance divided by the time it has taken to cover that distance. It means we are going to get the speed of this particle along the circumference. On the right hand side, you can see we've got, if we can separate this equation so that we have theta over t separate from r, then we get omega. And we can see this one is going to give us r omega. So remember this was the first equation, which stems from the definition of angle. Then from the definition of angular velocity, omega, we got this equation. And now we've got an equation which connects angular velocity and the linear velocity. Now what does this mean? Let's assume we have two particles. There is one particle which is at this point. point uh, let's call this point C. This is point A. The particle at point C will travel along this path here. You can see that in a complete cycle, its path will be smaller than the path for particle A. But since both of them are attached to the same radius, they will have the same value of omega. So particle A and particle C have got the same value of omega, but the value of V will be different. The speed of C will be lower than the speed of A. And it is easier to see that because in a certain given amount of time, C covers a shorter distance compared to the distance covered by A in the same time interval. So this is an exact relationship. So we can see that 
although the two particles have got the same value of omega, the one whose radius is larger will have a larger speed. So particles which are near the circumference of the circle will have a higher speed than those which are near to the center of the circle. Think about a disc which is uh, spinning or maybe the wheel of a grinder for example. If it is spinning, we've got different particles along the wheel of the grinder. There are those particles which are near the circumference. Those ones will have higher speed than those particles which are near the center. So, so they are going to have different values of V, but they will have the same value of omega. So that one's something to watch for. Now let's go back to this equation again. Now I want you to think about the value of theta for a complete cycle. That is for a complete cycle the value of s continuously increases continuously increases until when that particle comes here the value of s is equal to the circumference and of course i'm still using this equation that theta is equal to s over r for a complete cycle s becomes equal to the circumference but the r remains we know the equation for the circumference is 2 pi r when we divide by another r, we find that for a complete cycle, the value of theta will be 2 pi radians. Maybe you know this one elsewhere, maybe from mathematics, that uh, in a complete cycle, theta is equal to 2 pi radians. And you always write it like this, 2 pi with uh, a c, you know, raised to power c, and you can see, you can say that in a complete cycle, if a particle makes a complete cycle, then the value of theta will be 2 pi radians. But we know that in a complete cycle, it corresponds to 360 degrees. So you can say 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. And this one becomes a good way of converting from degrees to radians and vice versa. So remember this conversion unit, you can always use it to convert from one unit to the other. The final equation I want to look at here is the one related to the definition of omega. So let's look at the definition of omega for a complete cycle. We have said that omega is equal to theta over t. For a complete cycle, theta is equal to 2 pi. t becomes equal to a special value referred to as periodic time. The time taken when a particle makes a complete cycle is periodic time and it's given the symbol capital T. So remember, I'm just using this equation here, the definition of omega as theta over t. Then I'm asking you myself, what is the value of theta for a complete cycle? We have just seen that it is 2 pi. And what is the value of t called for a complete cycle? It is referred to as periodic time. So these are some of the equations that are going to be very useful as we go along in this topic. Now to end this lecture, let's look at one final example. So this is the example that I want us to look at. A wheel of a grinder makes. So this is the example that uh, I want us to look at. The wheel of a grinder makes 100 pi radians per second. Now from the units here, radians per second, we can tell that this is omega. So the value of omega is 100 pi radians per second. Now this is like 100 pi radians, of course, divided by 1 second. 
that's what this uh, expression means. 100 pi radians divided by 1 second. In other words, the radius sweeps an angle equal to 100 pi in 1 second. Now, I want to ask myself, what is the value of pi that it will sweep in 1 minute? So, this is what is going to happen. I'm going to say that this one is going to be equal to 100 pi. I can convert this. This is of course radians. I convert this one second into minutes. And I'm going to divide that one by 60. And I call this minutes. So you can see the units obviously have changed. Radians per minute. And this you can obviously see that it's going to be equal to 100 pi. And then I've multiplied that one by 60. And everything becomes radians. Divide by 1 minute. Like that. I'm very close to what I've been asked to work out. Let's continue and see what this means. So we're still on the value of omega. Now, I want to convert radians into revolutions. I know that 2 pi radians correspond to 1 revolution. Now, how about this many number of radians? 100 pi times 60 radians. So how about 100 pi times 60 everything radians? What will it correspond to? Can I do some cross multiplication here where I have this 1 times 100 uh, pi times 60 divided by 2 pi? And all that will be in terms of revolutions. So this radians here will be 1 times 100 pi times 60. Everything divided by 2 pi. Remember all that. I'm trying to convert this 100 pi times 60 radians into revolutions. Of course, divide by 1 minute. Remember the unit here is, this is a revolution and this is minute. So that I'm going to have revolutions per minute. So I'm going to have, if I ignore 1 here, I have my previous value of 100 pi. I multiplied that by 60 and then I divided everything by 2 pi and the units turned out to be revolutions per minute. Revolutions per minute. The reason why I've written all these is because I want to see how I can turn omega into revolutions per minute. When you are given omega in um, radians per second, the easiest way to do is to get the radians per second. You multiply that by 60 and then you multiply by, you divide by 2 pi. Everything will be in revolutions per minute. Revolutions per minute. It's just a quick way of knowing how to convert from omega in radians per second into revolutions per minute. So like for example, if you are given now the value of uh, uh, omega, for example, let's say omega 2 is something like um, 57 radians per second. This one in revolutions per minute will be, I get that 57 radians per second. I multiply by 60 
and I divide by 2 pi, everything will be in revolutions per minute. So it's just a quick way of changing from one unit to the other. Now, how about if you're given revolutions per minute? You want to change into radians per second. It is the opposite of this. You'll get the revolutions per minute. You're going to multiply by 2 pi and then you divide by 60. You'll get your answer in radians per second. So I want you to look for examples where you are supposed to convert from one unit to the next just for further practice in this area.